Hey folks, welcome to Don't Take Out Your Phone. Wow, um, I love doing these podcasts. I had an awesome chat with Priyank Lakia today. He was the uh, anchor for Bloomberg Business in India. And we spoke about everything from India's fantastic growth story to his journey from India to the UK and um, relations between in UK and India um, and all that good stuff. And I learned an awful lot. And I hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Great, and we're live. Uh, thank you very much, Priyank, for coming on my podcast. Thank you, We've known each other for like a year or so already. That's right. Yeah, I've had some good chats, so we should have recorded all of them. Um, but anyway, thanks. So we're at the um, House of Barnabas, which is where we came about a year ago. Yeah. Um, it's a homeless charity, and they've got um, a great recruitment academy upstairs. So we're borrowing their room, which is nice. Lovely. Yeah, it was really cool. So, um, so it's been a really interesting story for you. That's right. Um, you relocated from one of the fastest growing economies, India, into one of the maturest, which is London. Brexit happened, loads of other stuff going on. Um, tell us more. Well, Lewis, firstly, thank you so much for having me on your show. And, you know, thank you so much for hosting me at this lovely location as well. Pleasure. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, well, you know, as you said, it's been an interesting story. And I, well, I moved here a couple of years back from Bombay to London. And it's all thanks to my wife who got an opportunity to move to London. So that's what brought me to London. Ah, oh, perfect. And it, it was an interesting move. The transition, to be honest with you, wasn't really a smooth story. But then, well, no transition when you're moving from a different city to a new city has, has been a smooth transition for anyone. But the good part about that was you, you get to learn so many things, you get to learn, you get to meet a lot of people who then teach you a lot of things on the way as well. So it's, it's been a fairly mixed bag. But and you were from Bombay? That's right. Yeah. It, Bombay now, Bombay old name, Mumbai is a new name. Fine. But yeah, we, th that, that's a separate debate altogether. <laughs> Trust me, I don't want to get into that because that can go on for, for us together. <laughs> But you know, it's it's the, the good part about this is when when you grow up in Bombay, you get to see how that how that city has evolved over so many decades and over so many years, and it gives you somewhat of a front row seat by sitting there, experiencing what the whole India growth story about as well. So, yeah. as you said, you know, it's 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 an interesting market to come from because that's an emerging market to an extent, yeah. and then you see the kind of growth potential that that it, the country has to offer, and you're seeing what a developed market looks like it gives you a much better view of what that country can achieve over the next few decades. Absolutely. And then you get to you meet people who are participating in that. It's, it's a fabulous story. But then you decided to come to Brexit <laughs> facing UK. <laughs> well, that, 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 trust me, wasn't something that I really planned because when you look at Brexit, you know, sitting in Bombay or even sitting in India at that time, you weren't really expecting Brexit to happen. And even when we came here, we probably came here in March and exactly two years back in June, yes. you had Brexit, which took place. It came really as a surprise. Now, without getting into the debate of should Brexit happen or not, the, the point so far what we've experienced is you've the industry that I operate in, the industry and the people that I work with, there hasn't been a major impact to say so far. Yes, there is a lot of limbo. There, there are a lot of question marks. There are a lot of gray areas. But you haven't seen a major impact per se. Yes. so far so that gives you that little bit of an advantage of not being too worried about it right now well we don't know probably we six know months that. hence yeah. or even a year hence if it really does go through and if there is a chaos or there is a crisis then it's a whole different ball game but so right. far you've been somewhat insulated from that and that, that i think that, that that works that that gives you that little bit of you know support in terms of the market that you're operating uh in because for the simple reason that you have the emerging market knowledge and you also are in a developed market, which is seeing these kind of uh, developments, which then can be leveraged in various ways. Absolutely. And it's interesting that despite Brexit and, and other stuff going on here, it hasn't deterred you from, from staying the, over the longer term? That's right. Because, you know, the thing is, you, you want to see what a developed market holds in, in store. Now, yes, we my career or my life predominantly has been an emerging market like India and we've somewhat seen what, what that market has in store. I haven't had much experience or an exposure of seeing what a developed market can offer as well. So you, you're somewhere trying to leverage your understandings and operations of an emerging market and see how that can probably fit in 
you know, developed market to a certain extent. But at the same time, you want you want to understand what a developed market has to offer, and then at some point take it back and implement it in an emerging market as well. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's these factors that somewhat attracts me. And remember, the, the biggest the biggest advantage that London has today, and this is what I personally believe after living in the city for two years, is the diversity that this country and the city offers yeah. is very rare. Yeah. I mean, I've had some time in in New York. I've spent some time in Chicago as well, but the diversity in London. Is very different to what I've seen in other parts of the world, and that's what you really come here for. I mean, a city welcomes you with with a red carpet. It doesn't really hold you back in any sense. The opportunity it offers, it's it's great. I mean, you know, you, you can hundred percent for, for somebody who's brand new in the city to actually find his feet in a couple of months' time is is quite commendable. I I don't see that happening in any other city. No, you're right. You're right. Well, you had um, a front row seat in India on Bloomberg. Um, to witness the uh, the fantastic growth story, uh, tell me a bit about about that. So, well, Bloomberg definitely was a great experience. I was an anchor for Bloomberg for Bloomberg TV India rather for almost eight to nine years. Uh, I hosted their morning show, which was basically on capital markets. I hosted their uh, show, which revolved around corporate earnings. Basically, anything and everything that revolved around equities uh, was something that I was always involved in during right. my time at Bloomberg TV India. Now, what, what that did is. At a very young age, it gave me a somewhat of an understanding as to what corporate India, how it works, how equity markets work, what are some of the key themes to look at, and uh, which are some of the key sectors that have huge potential, and what, more importantly, investors look at when they invest in the Indian markets as well. So that that definitely was really interesting. Now, in that, I don't want to get into the equity part of it because I know your your listeners are probably more interested in what happens when we talk about corporate India and the potential there. Sure. Yeah. When you're when you're in an overseas country like UK, the media and the headlines more or less revolve uh, around comparing India to China. It's it's a good comparison because the growth rates currently in terms of the macro situation are at probably what China was a couple of decades back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that sense, yes, you are following that route of an emerging market growing rapidly, seeing a lot of changes. But remember, with India. The way the positioning of the government, the way the the, the whole democracy operates, it there are a lot of hurdles in that. So yes, it's good to compare it to China, but what I believe is you're still quite a few decades behind in terms of the growth potential. In just a few decades behind. That's right, yeah. and it will it will take a much longer time. But the good part is, it's open to a lot of foreign companies to participate in that. So right. yes, if you're a local player, you will see that growth potential coming in. The stock markets reflect that. The way some of the corporate, uh, local corporate houses have evolved over the last couple of years, it, uh, reflect that as well. But the good part about this is you're seeing a lot of new companies evolve. I mean, you, you've seen a big new tech, local, new local companies. That's right. Yeah. New local companies evolve in terms of the local tech space, in terms of the local. Companies that are now starting to branch into, let's say, it can be an NBFC business or it can be mortgage business. Old traditional houses are probably more catering to manufacturing. Have now started to branch out because they have seen that potential from the population for different services. To give you an interesting stat, Louis, you probably have less than ten percent of the Indian population that's investing in financial securities. Wow. Now, probably let's say ten or fifteen years back, the percentage was at one or two. Today, there are reports indicating that the percentage has gone up to what five, seven to eight percent is what that's gone up to. So, what, it, it, what's been the driver? The driver has been fact that traditionally you always had Indian investors invest in gold or real estate. Those two asset classes haven't been performing that well. At the same time, as there is more financial inclusion, there is more participation in these sectors as well, and that's why today the Indian stock markets aren't driven anymore. By foreign money. Don't don't get me wrong. It is a huge driver. It is a huge participant yeah. in the in the in the local stock market. But it's the local population now that somewhere is investing. I was just reading a report uh, this morning, Louis, where they mentioned that uh, you're seeing monthly inflows of nearly two billion dollars on a monthly basis wow. from the retail crowd. In and so local local Indian right. investors and all the money is getting invested only in domestic stocks. Remember, you don't have a lot of exposure when it comes to foreign securities in India. It's still a very domestic market. When I, in terms of investors, in terms of their preference, it's all getting invested in stock markets through mutual funds or through uh, portfolio managers or through you know family offices who are also participating in this. And we're seeing a, um, a kind of growing middle class now. Definitely, that's 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 probably the big story that everyone's been talking about. I yeah. mean, 
there are multiple reports that that raise a question mark on on that as well but from someone who's who's lived in bombay and who's seen how wealth has evolved in in just my neighborhood it gives you an understanding that there is massive wealth generation that's taking place in india and especially the four metro somewhere leave that from the front right. you've seen bombay evolve you've seen delhi you've seen bangalore uh you've seen chennai as well kolkata as well to a certain extent the all these cities have been evolving and the fact that you you're seeing new services being offered you're seeing more jobs being created and that's getting more and more people as participants in the growth story and all of that then leads to consumption interesting and it's so using more and more people come from um rural areas into cities it is that that, that is a trend that is an yeah, active yeah. trend and and remember it is a trend with any emerging market absolutely because absolutely. as as the aspirations grow as the opportunities emerge you will have people then migrate to an area where there's probably much more money or there's there's a better return or there's a better lifestyle more importantly is what they can then achieve yeah and are you seeing amazon and netflix entering india as well now aren't we that's right in fact they've they've become so this is an interesting trend louis you mentioned that because amazon and netflix both of them have been in india for some time now but now with as so india probably is home to one of the largest population of under 35 it's it's probably one of the largest country that has the biggest population right. of the millennial crowd for you to yeah, categorize yeah, it yeah. now this is driving the whole consumption story to a certain extent and that's why you've got amazon india and netflix betting heavily on these markets and in fact i, I remember recently when i was in in bombay as well i was reading an article which mentioned as to how the head of amazon india was given a much more senior role at amazon as, as a parent company yeah. because The, the company in india was generating a lot of revenues they were very bullish on that story as well so amazon india definitely is a is a big story and a big opportunity uh for them but netflix recently has been generating a lot of local content so so louis when you oh, talk so, so about local films original content that's right because bollywood stuff and bollywood or short series which are again right. shot in local languages they, okay. they're also looking at ways as to where they can tap into what's more trendy locally now remember you you have the western influence to a certain extent but there are still i mean the culture the way you know a, the millennials in india are, are grown up is still a very very different and what what they like what, what they prefer is still very different to what you probably see in tv series yeah. uh, in in the western world netflix in india is generating that kind of content right and they're actually penetrating the local television market quite heavily and when i say the local television i'm talking about the content out there, i don't mean uh, the, uh, the manufacturers of television i'm yes, talking about yeah. the content that's been produced on television uh, uh, for these new cha- uh, for these old traditional channels so that that's changing louis and it's it's interesting to see how foreign brands are creating localized content in fact mcdonald's did that when they walked into india as well they initially came in with products which were very westernized in terms of so to give an example chicken nuggets <laughs> it it never got sold really? it, it it never sold in india love like a chicken like that trust me if you were to offer me that right now i i, I would gobble it up but, <laughs> but it, it never worked in india and the thing is they actually the, the menu today in india is very different to what you'd probably see anywhere in the world a so lot no, no no big macs and so you probably don't have any beef burgers obviously but yeah, yeah. at the same time you have a lot of like you probably have a, a wedge patty which is again stuffed with paneer or it has local in- ingredients which are probably more famous yeah. with you know the locals in that sense so the fact that such a large organization has customized its menu or has adapted itself to cater to the local taste is what a lo- lot of big multinationals do when so they come to india so it must have failed on that regards like it must be expensive and very time consuming to you know to want to break into the indian market it it is but at the same time remember the aspiration bit also helps now because what, and what i mean by that is McDonald's when it came in was probably 20 25 years back I can't remember the exact date but it was a long time a uh, long time back when they entered the Indian market there was recall there was that uh, wait for McDonald's but when we talk about other brands there isn't that kind of wait so yes. th- they face that hurdle but at the same time today to give another example H&M when they opened up uh, in, in India there was a long queue for guys to actually go into the store oh wow Now remember th- these are guys who probably traveled overseas they've shopped at H&M yeah, they've absolutely. bought some clothes they they're aware of it so that 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 trend also is changing now where initially let's say for Zara or an H&M came in they would have to do a lot of marketing they would have to do a lot of advertising it's not the case anymore people are aware 
they're they're more in sync with what brands they need to wear, what brands they need to uh, shop from because they they're well traveled now. Yes, yeah. with, with the wealth generation, you've yeah. got a large population that does multiple trips in a year overseas. Right, uh, mostly coming to, to Europe and the US and. Yes, and and I mean you've always had Southeast Asia as as a key key uh, location because you know it's it's close to India. It's it's a much shorter flight, but now you see a lot of uh, millennials or uh, the younger population rather opting to somewhere travel to Europe for a ski trip. Which again, remember, Indians are not no, known for their sort of ski trips or you know having yeah. that kind of uh, inclination towards a cold destination. Yeah. But now with, with this generation, you're seeing much more sort of preference to have a much different experience as compared to a traditional just sit on a beach have a beer experience because they they've done that it's not the first time that they're doing it it's probably the seventh or eighth time that they're right. doing it now and are you seeing then maybe as a result um really good quality young indians opting to live and work abroad now that that are indians losing their I mean obviously they've they've lost you momentarily um but is that a trend it's been a trend for a long time we, we, it, it's called the brain drain now yeah. it's it's been it's been there for a long time I mean, if even if you look at what's happening in in the valley you've got some of the big companies being led by you know uh, indian origin people who've been there for a long time and they've all been educated in india at some point but then they migrated uh, to, uh, to the united states or some other location where they've got that experience to then uh, work with larger brands but that trend somewhat reversed a couple of years back now with the opportunity that india offers you're seeing a lot of people come back because as i said with a mature market yeah. yes you you've got some advantages both markets have their pros and cons the one advantage of being in an emerging market is you're clocking growth rates of over 20% as a wow. norm wow. you don't have to struggle that hard i mean don't get me wrong it's all hard work at the end of it of but 20% is somewhere the norm for most of these mid sized companies i'm not talking about large established brands but the mid-sized companies where you want that kind of participation you aspire to become a larger larger company you see healthy growth rates of 20-25% as a norm and remember this is a market as we spoke earlier the financial inclusion banking accounts these these are things which are probably just been in the know for the last 5 to 5 to 10 years so there's still a large population that needs to come on board yeah. for these kind of services and we're seeing salaries increase as well yes that 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 has been a trend i mean slowly and steadily you are seeing that that sort of trend coming in it's still nowhere compared to what we see as a global norm but louis remember the cost of living is much is very different to what we have in london new york or chicago Absolutely. or even the valley for that matter so salaries are catching up i mean if a lot of larger brands locally now are offering attractive packages because remember as you said if not there is that inclination to start looking at overseas opportunities yeah. if you know you don't have that same sort of uh, i won't say same similar pay packet identical but uh, if that sort of opportunity you don't see that then there is that inclination to start looking at overseas yeah. opportunities yeah uh, which you did that's right so how have you found the transition the transition has been interesting louis because remember for me moving from media uh to more of a sort of a financial role i was changing countries i was switching cities i was switching my industry as well so for me initially it was a lot of hard work yeah. but then it was obviously i met people like you who you know who somewhere guided me who held my hand in terms of pointing me towards areas that i can then leverage my expertise because the good part about london or a developed market is it's a much more professional world it is a, it is a much more welcoming world when you have something to offer and that's what i've i've somewhere understood that i have something to offer in terms of my understanding in terms of my access to the indian market yeah that definitely. definitely and that's that's where the transition then came in a little bit much smoother as compared to what you'd probably find somewhere else so yes initially there were some hurdles but then as you adapt yourself to what, how the city operates how things function locally you then start fitting in yeah once it. once you plug into it fully but it sometimes it's it's tough coming into a big city you know new social networks and new job and and everything people are busy they don't have as much time to spend with you it takes a bit of time doesn't it but that, that's right louis and you know the thing here is if the, what, what i realized when when i moved to london is you have to constantly keep reaching out because there are people who would like to have a conversation and because this market is so so diverse in terms of the guys who who invest or the people who invest in uh, uk they're not originally from london either 
they're all from overseas locations. I think it's like 55% of people from London, living in London, aren't originally from London. There you go. So I mean, it's fantastically diverse. And everyone's open for a conversation and they like meeting new people. So if you, yeah, if you, if you, if you make the effort to do that, then it's a snowball effect. You end up meeting so many different people. And that's exactly what somewhere worked for me as well in, in terms of all, in my two years out here. I've just constantly kept meeting people who, who not, who've probably grown up in London, who are from various locations in Europe, some have moved in from the States, some have come in from India just like me, probably you know, 10 years or even for some cases 30 years uh, before before me. So it's, it's good to learn from a lot of these people as to what their experiences have been. And more importantly, they all want to deal some way or the other with India. Yes. Because that's a growing market. You've seen what they've somewhere, they've already participated in China's growth story or they've had that, you know, connect with China at, at some point. Now they see that same potential in India. So they want to learn more about this market. Absolutely. And that's where I step in. No, no, brilliant. Have you, have you found that it's, it's easier or harder to, to, to build a career in London as opposed to uh, Mumbai, Bombay? That's actually an interesting question, Louis, because I'm just giving it a little bit of a thought because... Growing up in Bombay, it was much more easier to somewhere fit in and to get a lot of opportunities in that sense. London, obviously, as we've discussed, and I've told you this uh, as well, I, I came in blind. I mean, yeah. we just literally walked in. was my first visit ever when I moved to London <laughs> right. to actually visit the city. So in that sense, it was difficult. But after having worked for almost a year and six months out here, you realize that this is the opportunity that the city offers is much more different to what I had in Bombay. Don't get me wrong, if you're just looking for a job, you will get a job in both cities. It's about then stepping up and taking it to the next level. I feel that because Bombay is an emerging market, and if you're a business owner and if you're trying to offer a service altogether, you've got that 25% growth. Yeah. If you're an employee, because there are so many people already, remember the population of Bombay is almost three times that of London. Wow. So you have a lot of people already involved in that. And because it's still a very unorganized uh, economy in that sense, you don't have a lateral growth in terms of when you're, as an, when you're an employee. But w when you take that same picture to London, and because it's a much more mature market, and things work in a much more organized fashion. So if you're looking at a nine to five, if you're looking to work professionally, you probably have a much larger lateral growth or an opportunity to move in a lateral growth in London as compared to Bombay. Interesting. Maybe. I think it's different in different sectors. Sure. I think you're broadly right. It's interesting, I heard a stat the other day that in India, the average tenure in a job is like a year or a year and a half. Like, like there's so many jobs being created in India now yeah. that people are very happy to move. And so, so the, uh, it's very dynamic recruitment market in India. In London, I think, um, you know, unemployment, the unemployment rate, unemployment rate is quite low. Um, and there's an awful lot of opportunities. So yeah, if you tap into the right space, yeah. there's some, there's some fantastic, uh, career options for people. You know, I'll, I'll give you this interesting stat, Lewis. I mean, I have this tendency to walk around on High Street and, you know, whenever you're on Oxford or Regent Street, have a look at all the shops that you see. I mean, you don't have to go in, but all these shops have a board outside saying, we're looking for help. If you want to work in retail, send us your CV. All the shops, and I'm not exaggerating out there, take Oxford Street, take Regent Street, or take a local High Street where you live as well. All these shops are looking for people to work. Now, there are two reasons why they're not getting people. One, obviously, because the sector that they're, ser they're working in or the industry is languishing and no one wants to step in Tough. right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's one. Yeah. The other bit is, obviously, the talent that's out here doesn't want to do that because you, you and me remember this was while growing up. Your, probably your first job was always to go into a high street retailer and just be a Absolutely. sales guy, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, you ask somebody who's getting out of college right now, if they want to do that, I'm sure majority of them are going to say no because they're either working in a startup or they're, they're more inclined towards doing something which is more tech-backed as compared to just going into a Zara or any of these high street brands and spending a couple of months there just trying to learn the ropes of how businesses work or just getting your feet. It's such a fantastic experience when you're young to do that. But most of, the, most of these young people would probably just be buying their, their clothes on their, online now. Exactly. It's tough. Yeah. And they, they don't relate to that sort of uh, right. experience now. But obviously, that's, that, that's, you know, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, you evolve into various different sectors. So today, you probably have that same college uh, person who's graduating, learning about social media and how one can market his services there, or multiple other career options which are now opened up, which, didn't, which weren't there when we were probably getting out of college 
uh, a, a few years back. Yeah, I, I did. I did so many different jobs: retail, barman, cocktail barman, <laughs> warehouse stacker. <laughs> Everything. It was great. It was great. Why, Andre, why is there such a great trade relationship between the UK and India? Well, you know, the, uh, it's, it's been something which has been there for a long time, Lewis. And, and you know, you're right in spotting that because when I moved to London, I, I, was, I didn't know what, what's in store for me. I, I came into the city for the first time, so I, was, I didn't know what to expect. But when you come here, you hear about so many uh, successful businesses that have been run by... Indians, not not only from India, but even from East Africa or Africa for that matter, and they, they've been here for a long time. Now, with with India evolving into a large superpower in terms of the emerging market, and you know, barring the old history that we already have uh, with uh, with the British as well, the business potential has really evolved massively. That's seen a massive amount of jump uh, recently. With Brexit coming in, there's more inclination to have other trade partners like China and India. And with the Indian diaspora and how massive that is in UK, there's always been that connect with operating from India. So maybe the real estate industry, maybe the financial services industry, maybe hotels. There's always been that inclination where you all you always seen a lot of Indian money being invested here. Yeah. And I'm not talking about this is 10 years or 15 years. I'm talking about this being here since 50, 70 or even 80 yeah. years yeah. in certain cases. You've got large corporates or large uh, conglomerates that have invested in businesses, in manufacturing, in, in the UK as well. And there's always been that synergy because, yes, the technology, the expertise of running industries in UK has always been a big advantage. And that's that's always been taken back in India. And there's been a sharing in terms of either helping you with manpower to run certain industries out here. So it's, it's been a very mutual agreement no, absolutely. In, in, in that sense. And has the, um, so there's been a lot of, lot of talk obviously around visas recently. So since the financial crisis, the UK government have, kind of, I'd say, half, almost half the amount of visas they've been issuing. Have you, have you seen a kind of drop then in, in Indians being able to come here? So it's, it's been, the, that's been the case, but there are two other reasons as well. Now remember, one of the biggest attractions for Indians to come to London, and I'm talking more from the visa point of view, has always been student visas. Now, the, the two top attractions have always been United States and UK yeah. in terms of student visas. With what Brexit has done in the last couple of years, you've seen that trend somewhat go down a little bit. Because remember, any student who comes down here for, for studying has aspirations to then get into the job market yes. as well. Yeah. What Brexit has done is it somewhere scared a lot of these students who are then looking at other opportunities. So Canada, Australia have been the big beneficiaries of this. Now, the other bit, obviously, is a skilled worker who wants to come here as a, as a, maybe in the IT industry, okay. maybe in the uh, NHS, or something, yeah. or doctors, or whoever. Oh, yeah. That has still had a lot of demand, but obviously with the way, you know, you've seen the government headlines on this, it's been somewhat of a big uh, debate, e even in the political circles is what I gather yeah. from my limited knowledge yeah. out here. So we need, so, so the UK need to, need to do a bit more in trying to attract these highly talented Indians to come work here. Because we we will have and we do have skill shortages in these in these key areas. True. So I really hope that they uh, that they do more marketing in India. And and you know, Lewis, the, the point here is it's not only about trying to get uh, you know skilled workers to actually work in in let's say the NHS or any of these uh, large organisations. It's also about what they can then build here. To give you an example, I mean, on, in, in the valley, you have majority of the unicorns at some point being started by Indian founders or they have an Indian founder as part of it. Yes. Yeah. Now, if that's if that's where the world is evolving into or that's what we're seeing, you want not only the high-skilled workers who want to come here and then, you know, work in the organization, but you also want to attract, uh, you know, the, the brain in terms the of who can... The entrepreneurs, the risk takers, yeah. You, you want to get that crowd in along yeah. with the workers as well. Definitely. And it's like if you scare one, one group of people, you're going to scare the other group as well. Yeah. And I think that's that's where the big challenge is. How do you keep a balance well, of that? Yeah, but I think we've, I mean, in the UK and London, we've really created a good environment for Indians to want to come work here, oh, definitely. build a life. You know, there's a lot of Indians here. Oh, yes. I'm not sure what the stats are, but so hopefully that will continue. Oh, definitely. In fact, even today, you're seeing more and more people now starting to opt to just have a quick week, uh, weekend or a couple of days in London because a lot of, you know, who I interact with from Bombay, uh, what, what we, what, you know, we sense is London is, is as busy and as, as vibrant as Bombay is. I mean, 
I know you haven't visited Bombay as yet. It's, no. it's, it's on your to-do list. It's on my list. On my when list. you go there, you'll see it's, it's as vibrant a city yeah. as what we have in London out here. So a lot of people somewhere relate to London in, in a very positive way. And that, that's that's why you see a lot of Indians in the summer. Obviously, trust me, I, I hate the cold as you well. You must have a uh, you must have a busy house then. All your friends <laughs> coming, visiting. Well, you, you they, they love to stay. They, they love to come over. They love to stay with uh, with us in that sense. And it. It is something that we encourage as well because, you know, now that we're in London, we, we like to have our friends over. We like to invite them. You know, we take them around in London. Obviously, shopping is a big criteria. Shopping is a big, uh, big agenda. But is stuff cheaper here? I wouldn't know. Trust me. I'm, I, I'm not a big shopper. I, I wouldn't know the pricing bit, but it's, it's not about uh, the, the cheaper bit. It's just about what options you have. Yeah. It's, it's a variety that you get uh, in on Oxford Street or Regent Street for that matter. And the options that, that you open up here are much more as compared to what you'd find anywhere else, in, at least in India. No, definitely. Do, do you feel that the, uh, the economy in India is going to open up even more over definitely the next five, will. ten years? It, it, it will. And, and Lewis, as, uh, you know, as we've been discussing, you've got to be patient when it comes to India. And I, I say this to everybody that looks at the India market from an investing point of view, is that with India, you've got to work three, you take three steps forward and two backward. And that's how you move forward. Right. Because... The, the, it's 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 one of the largest democracy that you have in the world today, and it's not going to be straightforward. Remember, there are a lot of uh, changes that are happening in the culture. Uh, you know, a lot of things that the, the way they function traditionally are changing now with the younger generation getting more and more involved. Maybe politics, maybe government-oriented uh, jobs, or even corporate sectors. So that's changing and it's evolving. And yeah. you've got to be patient for that change to somewhere take place. So I, I meet a lot of people who've burned their hands in India when they invested probably pre-2008 or even during the crisis. But if you were to look at it now, you need to take a fresh look because there are new companies that have come into the market. There are new business houses that have now somewhere evolved and have become serious players in their respective industries. So if you're, if you're somebody who's looking to then look at that kind of space, it has an opportunity for you. But, so, but still, local companies are dominating. Local co- companies are dominating because that's, I mean, with any emerging market, you have yeah. that support and you have that hand-holding yeah. from the government right now to more promote the local uh, companies. Yeah. But remember, as the aspirations grow of, the, of people, as they realize that a lot of people are opting to travel abroad, for example, as we said, for shopping, you will see that, uh, you will see the government realize that they need to somewhere tap into uh, and bring these brands locally so that the money then starts staying locally as well, yeah. rather than that money then going out for shopping or just for travel and tourism is fine, but they, they want that consumption demand to stay more local rather than international. And are we seeing international brands um, set up joint ventures, you know, get yeah. local partners to, to understand the market? Is that the best way for them to get in? Yes, and, and the, we've seen plenty of these partnerships in the last 10 years or so is what I would say. Okay. You've got... Uh, big high street brands, you've got big mega brands, both, I mean, from US, UK, who've signed up with local partners and they're doing test runs in certain tier two cities. They're operating uh, tier one cities as well. They're doing their pilot projects right now, but some brands have already evolved. So so to give you an example, Zara and H&M have already become more, they've spread their wings in various cities. But now you're seeing other players are the local brands who are probably restricted to, let's say, a traditional UK brand like Mulberry, for example, is looking at Asia as well. They probably have India on, on their list. So it's these brands which are not that, who don't have that large a global presence. But now they're starting to look at India and China as, as key markets. Interesting. I, so I went to London Tech Week recently. Um, loads of entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, and London's a really attractive place for uh, tech at the moment. And a lot of foreign tech entrepreneurs are coming. Um, any advice on like settling in and moving from an emerging market into into somewhere like this? And to be fair, Lewis, the thing is, you know, I was part of London Tech Week as well. I I managed to attend a few events. Now, when you go there, you see the the aspirations of the entrepreneurs who've come in. It's really inspiring to see what they've created. It's really inspiring to see what they want to do, what they want to build here as well. So the good part for them is to always be aware of what you want to build, stay in that sort of uh, circle because trust me, out here you've got private equity firms not only from UK, you've got investors from all over the world. And if you have a product which is good, if you have a product which is trying to do, which is trying to build something, 
you will have a lot of investors participate in that. Yeah. And th- that's that's the only advice for for these entrepreneurs because so in is, this it easy, so is it easier for uh, is it easier to raise money here than in Mumbai? Mumbai. <laughs> Get the terminology right. Isn't it? <laughs> well, it's it, I I would say it's it's same because it really depends on which industry you are in. Because I've got somebody who's just raised a fund to invest in Indian startups right. in in UK. It's based in the UK, investing in India. That's right. Right. And the the reason they're doing this is because there are a lot of firms that want to participate in the India growth story, but it really it really depends which sector. So if you're doing, let's say, for something on payments, or if you're a fintech firm, it probably would make sense to have more operations in UK because the financial inclusion is still limited when it comes to India, um, but. Obviously, financial inclusion and, and the way you have payment services and what's being offered in London yeah. has a much bigger opportunity. But at the same time, if you're doing something more consumer related, you probably want to be in India because that's where you have massive, massive con- consumption demand, which is lying there. That's so true. It, it depends which startup you're in and which industry you're very true, catering to. Very true. But it, so the startup, as so I move just over to the startup scene in India, it is a, a mature, well-developed ecosystem. Where you have a good a good business idea, let's say it's in retail, you need to raise some some capital. Oh yes, yeah. It's, I, I wouldn't say it's mature, but uh, it, it's seeing a lot of attention, not only from local investors. You already have a few homegrown private uh, private equity firms, VCs that have already evolved over the last ten to uh, over the last five to ten years. But at the same time, now you've got a lot of foreign firms who are setting up in India as well because they want to participate in the startup story. So. It's not a mature market as great. yet. No, it's great. It has a lot of potential. It has a lot of people still building interesting products that are being somewhat looked at, not only local firms but even VCs and private equity firms from overseas. Yeah, interesting. And then London are trying to do all they can to attract these people here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, the, the thing is, it's you, you've got ideas and you've got products and you've got a big market that's sitting in India. But obviously, from an investment point of view, you have to look at US or UK, where you can then get the money to get you off the ground, to, yeah, or you can part yeah. to get that little bit of marketing or how the expansion mode. You need that sort of push in terms of investors. That that's when you start looking overseas, yes. uh, because yeah. yes, the local participants will be there. But if you really want that global presence or you want that global push, you have to get some investors from overseas on board. Yeah, interesting. Well, thank you very much. Really interesting <laughs> conversation. Um, Good luck with all of your stuff and um, I'm sure we'll speak again soon. Thank you so much, Lewis, for having me. Thank you. Hey folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places.